Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bring you another time video today. Today I'm bringing you a nymph pattern and this was an oldie, an oldie but goodie. Um, it's a Frenchie. I've done a video on it before, but I'm just freshening it up, making a little bit better quality video this time. And uh, I actually was on Spring Creek yesterday fishing and was going through my box, switching flies, trying to figure out what I was going to use next. And I saw it there, the Frenchie, and I thought, you know what? I haven't used this fly for a while. Let's put one on and see if I can catch a fish on it. And honestly, the first cast, I missed one. I cast back in, and the second cast, I caught a fish on it. So um, it's just one of those flies that catches fish. It's a great generic pattern, which if you know me, I like to tie generic patterns. And uh, you can even play around a little bit with your colors. Change the hot spot on it. Change the dubbing color to, you know... Uh, orange or something like that all those things work great and uh, just have a couple different ones in your box also I'm going steelhead fishing here really soon and uh, you know I'm planning on using them then too they work great for a steelhead also so here it is guys real simple one I'm gonna show you the f picture of the fly and then the material list to tie it All right, here you see the Frenchie in the vise. Very simple fly, easy to tie, and it catches fish. So let's get into tying it. For a hook on this fly, I'm using one of our jig hooks, the Whole Singers Fly Shop jig hook, in a size 16. For the bead, I'm using a gold tungsten slotted bead from Firehole. This is a 2.5 millimeter. Uh, I'm trying not to go too heavy on this. I want some smaller ones. For thread, I'm using 70 denier fluorescent pink thread. This is going to be our collar at the end, and that's why I'm going with pink. You can go with the orange here, that would work great too. And I'm just going to wrap it back towards the bend of the hook. Next, we're going to put our tail on. For the tail, I'm going to use cock daily on. If you don't have cock daily on, you could very easily use the pheasant tail here, that would work fine. Uh, but I like the cock daily on, nice thin tail. Going to get about six or so strands of uh, the tail fibers there on that cocktail on and we're going to set it on top and then I'm going to shorten it up to the length I want. Now the length I want, I want it to be like from the bend of the hook to the bead. That's about the length of the tail I want. So that distance off the bend of the hook. I like that right there. So I'm just going to wrap that back. Now you see it roll over a little bit there, so I'm going to put one wrap underneath it, and that kind of helps stand it up a little bit. Now I'm going to wrap back up towards that bead, and I'm going to try to keep my wraps to a minimum here. Next thing we're going to put on is our wire, and for that I'm using some brassy gold. You can go smaller, but I do like the brassy here, even on this small of a fly just because it shows up when you're done wrapping it. Next thing I'm going to put on is some pheasant tail fibers. And this is about five or six pheasant tail fibers here that I just pulled off the shaft. And I'm going to start them on here. I like to start it on the side, get them on there tight, and then I'll pull it in to where I get them all tied down, but I don't have to cut any off like, like you see there. And then I'm just going to wrap it back once, back to that tail. And once I get back there, I'm going to wrap it back up to the bead and wrap that bead in place. Okay, next thing, we're just going to wind this forward and I'm going to have nice side-by-side -side wraps. So I cover up that pink thread. And we're just going to wrap that the whole way right up to the bead. And then tie it off. This is a great generic pattern, imitates the little brown fly. There's tons of mayflies in the water that, um, that this imitates and it just works for anything. The last thing we're gonna, well not the last thing, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna counter wrap this gold wire up to the bead and then wrap it off. So I get about three wraps on there and then I just helicopter that off. 
I'm counter wrapping it because that'll hold those pheasant tail fibers in place of get bit up by a trout and the trout teeth will tend to tear up the, fi the fibers and might break them. Last thing I'm adding is some ice dub UV pink and I'm using very, very little of it on this small fly. So I'm going to wrap that on, make a really nice tight noodle of it. And that is like, I don't know, the length of a dime maybe. Nice and tight. And I'm just going to put that right there behind that bead. And once I get it wrapped tight behind the bead, I'm going to whip finish to make my collar. I'm not going to make a collar before I whip finish. I'm going to use my whip finish to make the collar. You're going to take two nice whip finishes on there, pop that thread off, and we are done. And that is all that's to this simple little fly that catches a ton of fish. Alright guys, hope you liked that video. Really easy one, um, really basic one, a beginner style fly that... Um, if you're, you know, if you're just starting out into fly tying, this is one that you need in your box and you need to learn to tie because you're going to use that wrapping the, pe the, uh, the pheasant tail fibers on a lot of different patterns. Uh, a couple different nymph patterns call for it, a couple dry flies use it. You know, there's a lot of different things. Merger, emergers, wet flies use them all the time. Uh, so what I always stress is building up on your techniques and this is no different. This pattern, the reason why I'm bringing you it is because it's, it's one of those great ones keeping your dubbing really small to make that collar on this very small fly. You don't want to overdo everything. Everything needs to be proportionate. If you remember one I showed you in that video about your tail length. Tail length is one thing that beginning fly tires often get way too long. And uh, it's, it's just common and it's the fish are still going to take it. Don't worry about it. The fish are still going to eat it. They don't care. But a lot of guys, you know, you're tying for the tire too. To if you want to share it on social media and that kind of stuff, you you, you want it to look good and you want it to look proportional, and that's the goal. So um, that's why I stress the size of the tail in this video. Just one thing to point out there. Um, have fun tying, guys, but learn while you're tying. Take these techniques I'm showing you now, build on them, add them into the next fly that you tie. So that's what tying's all about. It's all of just building one technique onto another and onto another and onto another. And you can learn to tie some really cool flies, uh, really intricate, difficult flies with basic techniques. So have fun. That's what it's all about. Like always, guys, if you need any of the materials, you can find them at our shop at wholesinglersflyshop.com. And if you have any questions or comments, you can either drop them down below or email me at wholesinglersflyshop at gmail.com. So until next week, guys, when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.